We are in Glacier Bay National Park and I want you to notice that there's just numerous icebergs floating in the water in Bayment. We're actually in a fjord, which is an ancient U-shaped valley that's been flooded. Here's a still shot showing you some of those icebergs and notice how dirty the glacier is and some of the icebergs. That's important because icebergs do contain dirt and rocks. So those rocks, as an iceberg melts, can literally drop out, same thing with the sediment, and they'll settle down to the bottom of the embayment or a lake, and this creates the phenomena of drop stones and even barves, which are sediments that have settled down at the bottom of a lake or embayment. Thick barbs represent more rapid uh, glacial melting, and thinner ones represent cooler, less melting seasons. At the end of the process, this is what happens once the sediments are lithified and hardened. And you can see that dropstone just doesn't belong where it is in the middle of fine-grained uh, glacial silt sediments. Just a clue for geologists to help us understand more about glaciers. So icebergs also provide habitat. Isn't this the coolest thing? We saw a bald eagle sitting on an iceberg raft and then it took off and found some lunch. <laughs> and then we didn't see it again. So we've got some calving going on. That is an example of calving right there. It's exactly what people want to do. You heard people doing ooh-ah, but that's natural ablation of a glacier. Part of it, yeah. And you can see that those are now icebergs in the embayment. So calving is where all these icebergs come from. If you'll take a look at the water color, I'll just kind of, oh, you got an animal down there too. It's like a seagull. Whatever reason they like the salt, it must bring up some other animals. But pretty exciting that you got to see some calving. We'll probably see another round of it here in a minute, but I do want to point out also this lateral moraine and just how big it is and how dirty the ice is where it's just scouring the side of that mountain. Same is true if you kind of zoom in on the other side, you can see that same dark moraine. I'll zoom out and you can see there's a horn at the very top and you can follow this glacier up the mountain. So lots going on here. And what's really interesting is to see how the glacial environment provides an ecosystem in addition to just being cool geology and pretty, there is an active glacial system that provides homes for all kinds of marine life. And it's really quite fascinating. This is an example of one of those runaway icebergs. You notice that you can see the ice is also beneath the surface. Obvious, right? But the dirt and the sediments and potential rocks in it is what I'm wanting you to focus on because as this iceberg melts, those have to go somewhere and they'll settle down to the bottom of the embayment like this. So that iceberg came from this particular glacier. We just were coming up on the glacier as we were on the cruise ship and boom, there it was. And here we came and saw all of these items. Well, this cannot occur without glacial calving. So as you're looking at this glacier, you'll notice all the valley glacier features like the horn. If the ice melted, you'd have a giant U-shaped valley. The lateral moraines, the terminus, so there'll be some moraine deposits that we're not seeing in front of the glacier. And you just have to really contemplate where all this sediment's going. So if the ice melts, that sediment's left behind on the sides there. And you can also see some crevasses, which is how the glacier pulls apart. Looking at this embayment again, you'll see all the sediment in the water and that will settle out and create barbs. If the icebergs contain rocks and they melt, then you'll get the drop stones and the barbs. Just clues for geologists to understand what was going on in geologic past. More to come, see you at the next stop.